Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome. Alrighty, as the tittle suggests, we're gonna crack some nuts. Didn't have a whole lot planned in today's video. It's kind of a make it up Mondays, kind of fiddle around with something. And I've already done the work on this, so it's more or less just gonna be showing. Um, this is where we left off on the last video which um, added in two weapons pickups. You walk over, you pick them up off the ground. Once you've already got them, you can't pick them up again. Hit the number one key, it changes your animations over and you're able to use weapon number one. You hit the number one key again, it puts it away and puts you back into your regular unarmed animation. Same thing for the second gun, the number two key will give you the number two weapon. You can hit one, it automatically switches. They, they're identical other than just color changes, but you can switch between them and if you change out to where there's no weapon, then yeah, you get um, back to your regular one. And this is just a little bot that I threw in here, just as a target dummy. Go into my first person view and we can take the weapon out if you want to. Hit the V key, go into first person and shoot. I'm using just a basic line trace. I wasn't really going to showcase shooting in this video. just testing. You can see whatever I actually hit nuts nut shot. And you get a little sound effect. And it says it in the upper left hand corner of the screen um, that you hit him in the nuts. Um, the basic gist of what it is and got something um, special to take a look at after we get done with uh, doing this part. This is just to show how you can show hitting different areas. And you see I've got um, headshot here and did not connect it back in all the way. So if we go back in here and actually make a headshot it says headshot but doesn't have a sound effect attached to it. It only makes a little nut cracky sound whenever you actually hit him in the nuts. But if you want to hit it to where whatever body part you hit, as you can see um, the one thing you, you got to remember whenever you're setting up your players to actually be able to be hit is uh, in the mesh, go into um, your collision presets, and I use block all dynamic. But with this, whenever you're doing your line trace type, you know, I'm leaving it visible so we can see what's going on with it. And um, from there, you've got hit bone name, and you can actually get that information right there. Now, if I wanted to, just to, to showcase what all you can do with it. Well, you can do a whole lot with it. Um, but you can also do this and type in two text name and I'm just gonna throw this in right here and for the hell of it, I'm just gonna throw right here a print text and connect this in. Let's gonna move these over here so we can see them a little bit easier. So with the print text, what's going to happen now is whatever we hit, it's going to actually print in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. So now we'll go into this, go into it, hit him in the chest. That's going to show spine two, spine two, I missed, um, spine one, of course head, upper arm. And what you can do is, yes, I missed it that close. Um, is if you want to you could add physics to that whenever you hit them it you know knocks that body part around uh, you could actually take that and say if I hit in the head we're gonna do 100 damage it's a headshot insta kill if we hit um, spine 2 it's 75 damage if I hit uh, you know below spine 2 which would be like Let's hit him in the hand. Like spine one would be like 25 damage and 10 damage for an extremity or something like that. You could actually base the amount of damage you're doing based on the hit location. And, you know, just for shits and grins, I want it to be a, a nut shot. So you can see it's um, being hit on the pelvis. It's printing out the hit location. And all I've done is come in here and drag off from this and say equal equal 
and then equal equal name is the only option that comes up and you can put a branch in there so if it is equal to the whatever you put in this box right here like head or pelvis or if you don't know what the name of the, the body parts are you actually can go into your your mesh for your character and you can copy it in from there okay well right here spine 2 well it's all lowercase instead of you can just right click and copy selected bone name and then just click in there and, and control V to paste it in just that easy so you can run a branch node and throw that in there if we hit spine 2 um, let's just say we got a print text here we could do the same thing here print text but you could have this trigger a widget or a sound effect um, see like this one I got play sound at location it's actually playing at the location of where you actually hit so it's it and I've got a sound attenuation on the the nut crack sound so whenever you do hit them there it actually will go ahead and just play it at the location of where the nuts are <laughs> so in here um, we can just type in spine shot whatever you want so now we go in and we start shooting see it says spine shot there headshot Yeah, see, initially all, all I was going to have was just the nut shot. Um, but for the nut shot, because I just wanted it to, to be a, a little extra bonus. I said all this was just impromptu. Um, so, yeah, this these were the only two that I was really going to do at the, for off of this. Um, just to, to get that, but you're saying to use um, switch on name. I just saw it. I'll run off of this sequence here. Because I want to be able to do, like, with the, uh, the nuts, I wanted to say, you know, to actually could run a, um, uh, a widget from here or whatever else, just like with the upper right. Yeah. So um default EXE Yeah, so this is just an executable pin here. So drag off from that and saying just like run that from there. Leave nothing on the uh, the default for right now, but on here. Oh, like right here. I got you. Okay, so you could actually put the name in there. I got you. So like um like so. So adding them in there, you can actually add in like that, and that will run there. Just need the location. Default, we're going to leave nothing on there. But 
I see what you're saying on that. Um, off a of default, you could just do like a normal um, impact sound. And then if it's a, the pelvis, you're going to get the nut crack. If it's a head, you're going to maybe hear a, a splat sound, uh, something of that nature. Yep, yeah, I like that. I actually leave that in there for right now. And um, but I like that. It was a game that I played years ago that um, that had a um, a bonus if you you made nut shots. So I figured, you know, what the hell? This was um, should have been part of Feature Friday. And was kind of prepping that for for that, and just needed something impromptu to to throw in there. <laughs> so I actually do a little bit more development on this to to get it more appropriate. Maybe add um, you know some particle effects and stuff like that. Wasn't actually I mean getting carried away on this one, but you know like I said this was from Feature Friday the the weapons pickup system. Um, to make sure that, uh, and server is off screen, so you'll be able to see that. So a client can pick up the weapons, one, two, one, let me grab the server, and do the same thing, grab the weapons, one and two. Yeah, so that's the client right there on the main screen there. So that works. It works. All right. So, yeah, like I said, this was just a matter of getting this rolling and started with. I will keep screwing around with that because at some point I want to build out a full damage system and everything else that with on this project, this would help with... Um, organizing that to get rid of some of this mess but I'll come back and I'll clean that up and get that going and may either do it on a Wednesday show or, or Friday show and actually start doing a full out um, start doing some damage um, before I get carried away with doing any animations and stuff like that too but since we got John here and um, be a good time I, I've just, I mean, just gotten this, so give me just a moment here to uh, get this extracted and um, take a look at something made by Senior John there. Gee, everything is in alphabetical order. It's because I'm in a subfolder. Okay. Um. Now, John just put this, it was submitted to the UE4 Marketplace. And this will be a nice alternative to um, my multiplayer uh, template. Make sure to run it from there. Uh, it was uh, made in 4.15, but you see when you run it the first time, it's asking select Unreal Engine version. I've got 4.20 installed, so I'm going to select that and, because that's what I have installed. So we're going to let this fire up. Yeah, ten dollars. It's cheaper than my system. Mine's twenty bucks, and mine will be getting updated soon. Here, I just I've got so many things I need to do, and not enough time. Hell, this is a whole lot different than the other version we looked at. Um, Let's go ahead and click there so we can take a look. All right, so we have is the lobby area, and these will be neutral spawns here in the lobby section. And I'm going to be a bad boy, and I'm going to take a peek outside. And then you've got the actual area, and this is test map one tab for in-game menu. And I, we've already done a little bit of limited testing with this earlier, and was quite impressed. Oh, got a heal and damage volumes. 
Interesting. And your actual team spawns. So, be best to run this in standalone. I would imagine. So, the window comes up. Now, this is single player right now. Um, your menu does come up, and you see the Steam stuff right here in the bottom right hand corner. You can join red team, lobby, or blue team. So, let's actually go to, because I know how the system works, go to the lobby. Now, you can see we have health bar above our character with our name above our character, and health bar in the lower left, and we are in the lobby. And each of these pads are the spawn locations. So, um, you can see we got a timer left on here. We can hit the tab key, and since I am a server admin, we're going to leave it on this and this for right now. I'm going to go ahead and select the red team, and poof, instantly I am on the red team. We have some basic animations here. It's a heal section. We'll damage non red team members over time. So, let's actually walk over here and. We got the board we can take a look at. Z to force respawn. Now, I will say that um, that is nice, but as we were doing some testing, we were having entirely too much fun just using that. Um, run over, jump, press the Z key, and try to time it so we can jump over this board right here. Uh, God, how much time did we spend just doing that? <laughs> Uh, like that <laughs> getting good air time and jumping over <laughs> we spent entirely too much time just doing that after we did the initial testing believe it or not it's a lot more fun than it looks <laughs> alright so heal and damage so now we can see our health bar is going down both of them we'll let it go down a little bit more and then since we're not on the blue team it, this won't heal us up So we'll go over here and we'll check this out really quickly and then we'll investigate some of the other stuff in the menu. Come back over here. You can see you've got a little particle effect going on there. That's cool. And we are healed up. All right, so the tab key for the host. You can change the match time from 5, 10, 15, 30, or 59 minutes. Let's drop it down to 5 minutes and set new time. You see it changed it. Now we have five minutes remaining left in our match. We can also change the map. So we have test map one and we have test map two and we could do travel to map. And poof. And then let's actually go to the blue team. Now you can go to blue team. You go to lobby if you're not ready. Say if um, you're playing this and holy crap, phone rings. I didn't take this phone call. Boop your player gets killed and you get transferred over and now you're in the lobby area which will be a safe area to keep you out of combat so it should have defaulted to the main menu map right sorry just catching that a little bit late so okay yeah I, I got this this phone call um, let's go ahead and change it to five minutes set new time Okay, I'm ready to get back in here and start playing again. I'm going to get back on the blue team, and the timer is still good, and we're back out here able to play. You see, we are on test map 2. Even though the maps look alike, um, you can see the board right here changes. It's test map 2. It's um, in blue. So if we change over to um, the other map, then you'll see it'll say test map 01, and the board's in red, if I'm not mistaken. So really 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 cool but you ask yourself well what can you do with this well right off the bat uh, let's see here oh my god John you and your your was the menu resume game and quit game so we're actually going to quit and um, let me try to run two player in standalone um, I have limited success doing this um, because you have to actually have to be in standalone game because a new editor window is not going to allow the, um, the Steam functionality. So I don't know if this is going to work or not. 
No, I'm just going to show the one. Um, yeah, it's just going to show the one. Um, yeah, if you try doing a new editor window, you get two windows pop up, but you're not going to, you won't see the Steam functionality, so you probably won't be able to see the game. So if I join lobby, come over here and just make sure we're in the right map. That may help. Um, yeah, let's try that. Yeah, much better when you actually go to the damn, like John said, go to the main menu. So, um, let's actually put it in land mode and the same thing, land mode. And this is server window. So I'm going to host a default server. And I'm going to join the lobby. And yeah, not going to work. Yeah, this is a downfall of testing. You know, trying to play with yourself has its downfalls. So. Uh, let's go back to one and stand alone. When you're doing Steam functionality, um, the upside to this is um, it does use Steam, but it does allow you to go into a LAN mode. So you get your Steam coming in right there. Host a custom server. You can select, okay, one a five minute or a 10 minute rotation. Set the max number of players. Oh, you can't run it as dedicated? Okay, I hadn't tried that before. So we'll do two players and select the map. Yes, yes, again, and that's Unreal Engine 4. That's not something on John or myself with either one of our templates. Um, it's just the way it works, and I wish it was different. It's a loading widget there. and But... I have run this. I have run this with John and one other person and several of us playing in here together and had no issues whatsoever. And that was the Z key to kill myself. Um, so yeah. What can you do with this? Right off the bat, there is no there's no shooting, there's no combat. So the type of combat is up to you. If you want to make this into a melee game or if you want to make this into a shooter game, um, you get a team-based system with Steam functionality and um, the ability to change maps. The host can change on the fly and travel to, and you can actually go to a lobby area where there is no combat. When you're ready to go, let's go ahead and select red team, and now we're ready for combat. The timer does not stop just because you went to the lobby. So... That is a nice thing. It is a nice fail-safe. Like, okay, I don't really feel like being in combat right now. Let's be in the damn lobby. I want to go in there. So you just hit tab. Go there. And your character dies. That way you're you're not leaving something out there on the battlefield. So it gives you the opportunity to put together a multiplayer game quickly and get in there and test your combat style. Like I said, if you want to go into a, um, uh, let's go red team, really fast switching. Um, if you want to set up this as a, um, press the P key. Ah, okay. You can get a player's list. How about that? So you can see, I like that. That's a nice improvement. So you can see who's on the red team, who's on the blue team, who's hiding in the lobby, and that kind of stuff. Hit P again to close it back up, and yeah. So I guess yeah. You look right here. It says press Tab for the game menu, press P for the player list, and Z to force respawn. It says map travel only works in standalone or packaged game, which is is normal, and that's to be expected. So, like I said, if you're trying to put together a multiplayer game and you want something that's quick and something you can just get in there and start testing, um, really easy to work with. Um, 
I, I pick on John all the time about his. Um, I, I use the escape key for my my menu system, and that's just me. Um, escape does not help you the least little bit when you're actually in the editor and, and playing in a new Pi window. Escape will actually close the window. So I understand why he does it. I'm just weird. I just I'm old and you know set in my ways. So me likey. Um, don't really want to show the guts of it because I don't want to give away any any of his stuff. But you do have the characters here. Um, so your player is here, character master, and your animation blueprint. Well, I'll definitely mess with it and, and set it up to uh, to work with. Um, again, this runs with Steam in the background. Um, just like mine, does it um, require Steam to be running in the background? I mean, what happens if I turn off Steam and then try to host a game? Can someone still find me? I like using the Steam functionality. Um, trying to expand my template with more Steam functionality um, to include things like um, whitelisting and things like that. Defaults to land. Okay, yeah. Um, see, mine defaults to broken. <laughs> if you don't have Steam running, it defaults to it doesn't work. But mine does tell you, go connect to Steam, dummy. <laughs> but if you want to change your character around, that's where you would go to um, Curtain Folder, Blueprints, and Character Master. Um, you got your animation blueprint, so here's where you, you could actually change your animation blueprint if you want to, because this is a default UE4 mannequin, and you could do that. Um, where see, so you got your regular UE4 mannequin right here, regular animations, your mesh, and everything else. So for retargeting, everything is right here, so you, you're you're all set for retargeting. Um, all you'd really have to do is come in here and go to Retarget Manager and select Humanoid Rig and save, and it's all set. And maybe you could answer this. Why the hell does Unreal Engine always lose my friggin' settings? Default, I want it to go to main window. And it used to retain this as my default. And I click on set as default. Are you sure you want to update the default settings? Uh, must be. And it doesn't carry over. Because I always wanted to go to the main window there. And loading and saving, I always disable enable autosave. If UE4 crashes and I lose everything, then that's my fault. If I'm not hitting that save all button and save, if I'm not saving myself, then that's my fault. But you would think clicking on set as default, um, hell yes, I want to set it as default. A default configuration file for these settings is not currently writable. Would you like to make it writable? Um, it was updated successfully. Check into source control. This would affect other developers. Um, this is not bad. So, it never saves that. So every time I come in here, I always have to, every time I open up a new project, I have always got to change this information over. It will not save it as my default. Even if I don't, if, if I set as default or not, it doesn't matter. Now, if I close this project and open it back up again, it'll be there. But if I open up a new project, then it's always going to be where I open up a, a window, it's going to be a window. I want it to go directly to the main win window up here. It just annoys me so bad. So if you were to um, retarget this, say, to um, the Cindy Studios characters, and I need to start doing some more videos for them. Um, I've kind of been slacking because I haven't been feeling well. I've had several different infections that have caused me to be locked to bed 
quite often. So, yeah, just... Yeah, so, um, also, if you're having difficulty, you can also, you know, try to get a hold of uh, John. You can always get a hold of me through here, and I'll make sure I can get you in contact and let John know that um, you're trying to pick this up. Um, Ten bucks. It'll be on the UE4 Marketplace soon. Um, John's got some other stuff on the UE4 Marketplace. Um, let's see here. Marketplace. Come on. Always so freaking slow. I am John. Yeah, I got something in my shopping cart. Okay, are you gonna do your thing or what? <laughs> oh, this thing is so wonky at times. Oh. Is it working? Is it not working? Make up my mind. There's no thing here to say that it's it's loading. Yeah, well, I search for something. It's not doing anything. Yeah, it's just not even refreshing. I hit enter and, and it's just not. It's just something either on my end or on their end. It's just not letting me search. Yeah, let me try it again. Yeah, this. Well, it works good enough to play Fortnite, and that's all they care about. I had to manually click on that. Oh, there's 75 at the end of your name there. Forgot about that. All right, other stuff from John here. We got the Jetpack FPS Basic. Got the Jetpack Pistol and Rifle Animations. Teams and Class Select. Look at that one too. That one's pretty cool. Um, Capture the flag. That's another relatively new one. Um, Works good. And uh, does that one have all the other cool stuff in it, or is it just the flags only? They have the the version that we we tested with the um. Oh, there's that's the full jetpack animation set. Um, yeah, the uh, simple. That's just a simple one. It's just to capture a flag only. So, but yeah, that's still pretty cool. Yep, John got some good shit out there. So if y'all haven't checked it out, definitely want to go in there and check it out. Yeah, the the one that we're showing here is um was just submitted and waiting for approval, but you can purchase it directly from John, and he'll actually make more money if you you get it directly from him. Uh, that way, um, Epic doesn't take a cut. So you've got this, uh, the basic menu system. You can host, host a default server, which what that's going to do is, you see it loads in, and say if you go into the lobby, you're going to get a default of 15 minute timer and map one. And let's go ahead and quit game and go back here. You got Steam mode and LAN mode. And if you want to host a custom server, you have the time you can set number of players. So if you only want two people in here, you can select two, and that's the default. Um, if you want up to 10 people, you can do that. You can change your map. Just, I haven't looked at it yet, but I would assume that it's relatively easy for you to, to add additional maps to this instead of just replacing the existing ones. 
So if you wanted five or six maps, or you can also go back to the main menu, um, custom two, eight, test map, and start. And quickly change. And again, if you are not the host, you won't get all this stuff right here. If you are not the host, all you're going to be able to do is change teams. Again, when you change teams, it auto kills you. You can see your health bar goes to zero. You collapse to the ground. And there you go. Except going from the lobby to here. And of course, you can also do this. Ah, oh, shit. Didn't make it. <laughs> um. Yeah, that was pressing the Z key. Whenever you, you walk over to a wall, and whenever you jump, hit the Z key and try to ragdoll yourself over the top. After um, sitting here going through all that, that's had me into the idea of looking into a newer version of the game that we talked about, which was um, essentially your player is standing at the top of the stairs and um, you have a pendulum uh, effect essentially and you move the crosshair up and down left and right to put it onto the, the position of the character like I say if you want to hit him in the head or hit him to the left side of the head right side of the head or the neck or the foot or the, the arm or whatever else your character is just sitting there idling at the top of a set of stairs and then you adjust the power level and then hit go, it hits the player or hits the uh, the mannequin at the top of the stairs and they just ragdoll down the stairs based off of being hit in a certain way. So if you hit them in the arm, they'll twist as they turn and fall. And yeah. Definitely want to look into that. I'm going to have to see if I can find the original game. It was um, made by a French guy, so everything was in French. And it was featured on a, a TV show, or was it a, a YouTube show, years ago, and fell in love with it. It was absolutely one of the most stupid and annoying games you could play, but I definitely want to look into that. And let's hit tab, quit game, and it was a single player game, so it's not like it was anything for multiplayer wise but let's see the new project um, I would even know what to call a, um, a version of that um, we'll just call it stairfall so I'm not worried about it being multiplayer so just being single player one person playing, whatever. I don't know what it is, but there's a bunch of YouTubers that are out there that have big shows and stuff. And I'm absolutely just one of the primary things they do is play some of the dumbest video games you can imagine. And their reactions and laughter to it is what really makes the, uh, the videos. So if you can envision you're, you're, you're having just a uh, mannequin at the top of the stairs, and then when you hit go, they fall down the stairs. Doesn't sound like much, but what you're, you're trying to do is whenever you're, they're standing here, they just ragdoll. You press, like, the E key or whatever else. And just for giggles for right now, Oh, you see what I mean? You fucking ass. God damn it, I'm religion for you. Suck sometimes. Open up a new project and gotta go through all this shit all over again. That's what it should be. It pissed me off. Why would you do that? God damn it. 
make this shit fit your damn comment block. It's like they resized it, and if you try to move that one, it just won't move because this shit's not in the damn comment block big enough, you know, fully enough. But essentially, let's do keyboard. Well, fuck it. We'll just do um, left mouse button. Press the left mouse button. What was it for? Well, nothing I want to do is event begin play. Because I hit a frickin' mouse cursor. Because I'm, you know, old and bitchy. Um, that will be set. No. Set input mode game only. Set show mouse cursor to fuck off. All right, so press that um, and press this key right here. What I'm wanting to do, I would assume, is um, simulate physics. Was that? Bueno, no bueno. I've had mixed results just doing it this way. Um, because what can happen is it just flips out and falls to the world like that. And freaks out. So, let's go back to this. Mesh. Block all dynamic. All right, so oh, that was um set collision enabled um, physics only. With that, that was, um, ignore pawn, query in physics, pawn, um, ignore. Yeah, like that. So, um, so for that though, I want to actually let's do right mouse button and undo that. So to undo it, essentially, really wouldn't be the, um, I know it won't be that simple. Yeah, you got to at that point. You have to um, um, because if you just re-enable the, the it that way, then 
got to reset the character. Because, like I said, just doing it this way, it's one thing to, to be able to, to do it, and then... But if you try to re-enable it like that now, you can see that it's there. Your capsule collision is still moving around, but it's not reattached back to your character again. Your character's stuck in that position there. Uh, let's see. She'll probably want to put that before this. had to have something plugged into it. Um, new. Nee, 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 nee. Um, Mesh. Why is it not zero there? Well, rotation set to 270. Yeah, let's see. That ain't gonna wake. Because <laughs> what happened there was uh, when I did it, it falls over nicely. When I hit right click, you can see he's in the middle there. The capsule is still moving, but it's not attached to the character. And of course, yeah, teleport flag. Um, let's um, dump all that for right now, and then. Just for the sake of, let's um, set the actual location, new location, leave it at zero, 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 and we'll leave that self. Um, and then probably need to move that to 100. Yeah, because it's going to put it below ground. Put it 200 to put them above ground. So you fall down and. Yeah, see, that's disarticulated. When you set simulate physics, it's actually doing that. Set collision enabled. Um. No, uh, physics. Um, I want to try to reset the physics. Add force. So there's a lot of things I need to look into for, for doing this and undoing this. Yeah, it's probably not a bad idea either. Um, do that. Make it a transform, compile, save, and let's get actor. No, um. 
asshole. Get actor transform. And we need to set. Do that on begin play. So it sets that. So it's, it's kind of like setting a respawn point. Well, I mean, I guess it would make sense to use the mesh transform if you're going to be, you know, calling it the mesh transform. Um, so let's roll that back. And then. We did um, set simulate physics to unchecked, so we're no longer using physics. And to actually do this, set relative transform. And do that. Um, yeah, that shouldn't affect anything there. Hmm. No bueno. <laughs> um. So I want to be able to reset it for the character. Um, <laughs> this is one of the things where I was playing around with it the other day with the um, the nut shot and the head shot. Whenever you make a head shot, I want the head to snap back and cause the character to ragdoll with radial force from the, the head. Or from the point of impact, in other words. But I don't want them to completely get knocked over. If that makes sense. So setting the relative transform, um, yeah. So let's go back over here, just because we want the visual standing on the stairs. We collapse, we fall down, and you bastard you could even fall down all the all the way. But we still have access to WASD controls. Oh, yeah, and this, I, I've had this issue before. Watch the mannequin as I'm moving. The hands twitch, the shoulder moves a little bit. It's creepy as fuck. <laughs> I had that happen in multiplayer. So people could walk around and could see you. Your character just sitting there on the ground and just your hands twitch. If you right click now, it resets your transform, but you. Yeah, your body's not part of the um, the equation anymore. You're you're lost. And left click does nothing. Right click does nothing at that point. Um, then whenever you do this, you don't want to delete the character afterwards. Um, I'm not convinced that that's a problem. There's there's something else that we need to do, and um, yeah, but it, the the mesh vanishes. So I hit play, fall down. I hit the number two key now to to try to reset it, and. I got nobody. My capsule collision is still there. I still have, you know, physics and can walk around. I can bump into walls. Not very well, but it's there. Um, collision.
and let's look at the mesh again because I've got the mesh set to um, object type, world dynamic, collision enabled, query and physics. Um, we want we want collisions that I shouldn't need that because I'm already there already have physics set up that way running this normally um, it's gonna be well the other way I had um, so linear dampening angular dampening enable gravity constraints Hmm. We're ignoring pawn there. Um, let's uh, try putting that back in there. Set to simulate. Well, bring it in off of the mesh. Reset all bodies, simulate physics mesh, physics, um, well, let's, let's do that because that's what we had before to set simulate physics, but did this simulate reset all bodies simulated physics. Allows you to reset bodies, simulate state based on where use physics is set to true. I don't know what the hell that's going to be good for. Um, no, I don't want that there, dumbass. Um, that was collision. Why did I change that? Um, collision. Yeah, okay. So, collision enabled query in physics. I know that's not going to do it, but yeah, I didn't do it. Um, ship. You know, there's one thing that I could probably do. Dumb, but. Mm, if it's stupid and it works, is it really stupid? It's one of those kind of things. Um, let's actually go in here and save all, save selected, file. Actually, um, no, go to content, new folder, maps. And let's do file, save current as maps. Test map. And now we're playing on the test map. So we hit the number one key. We enable our physics and that looks painful as shit, doesn't it? So probably also want to go ahead and do um, uh, character movement. Disable movement. And again, if it's stupid and it works, J. 
just reload the friggin' map. <laughs> you know? Because the only thing we're going to have on the map anyway is this. So we come over here, we stand on the stairs, we'll disable our movement, but is it going to there we go fall down the stairs so again I mean if it's stupid and it works you know just reload a whole new map so set up a situation for a character to just fall down shit um, I'll look into a different way of doing this but this works for now like maybe changing the camera view or something of that nature um, we can get rid of that get rid of th oh no not that that and let's just for shits and grins throw some stars Yeah, I think what it should be, though, is uh, <laughs> the camera needs to, to be able to move. Oh, you poor bastard. Um, let's dump that, because we're not going to be able to move our character anyway. Um, put our character in different stupid situations. See, now I can move my camera around. Oh, shit. Uh, yeah, he's able to move around a little bit. So, yeah, I'll come up with uh, some other ideas for this. If you guys got any ideas for this, um, absolutely pointless game where you press a button and your character just falls off of shit. Um, it doesn't sound like much. Um, maybe make the uh, the camera free roam. Yeah. Want to increase the amount of stuff like uh, the whole idea of of that one. I'll see if I can come up with um a link to that other game. But I want to expand upon that and just see what dumbness I can come up with. So the um, third person character, instead of actually using the third person character, I think it would actually be um, I don't know. You could have um, a free roam mode where you could come around and do this and position your character where you want him to be and then trigger it. But also to have a stationary mode where you're actually a free roam camera, where your, your actual player pawn is nothing. You don't actually control a player pawn. And the, 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 the character you see in the screen is just a stationary one, does, does not move until you trigger it and then there's only going to be one character don't there's going to be 20 of them unless you want 20 of them standing there doing the same shit um, we can see how whenever I've done this now the hand every time I move left or right it moves the hand around a little bit and the shoulders a little bit but yeah I have the uh, the player itself is a free roam camera going around in a certain constraint um, um, and then having a the, the character fixed like on top of a set of stairs or whatever 
and just ragdoll. But to have a little bit of force to whatever you hit them to where they actually just fall down. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just reloading the level every time I right click. I mean, you can actually jump and do it. Do whatever, but I'll come up with some other ideas. If you guys got some ideas on, on taking and expanding this to where, oh god, that really looks uncomfortable. Are your legs just supposed to, to fold that way? So I actually would like to look into setting out the constraints so that when the player does, the body won't maybe um, set a limit to the, um, let me put that disable movement back in there. But yeah, just to, to, to what can we do with our player? Causing our player grief, falling downstairs, um, getting hit by a vehicle, um, things of that nature. What can we do to, uh, to abuse our, our character? We have um, a free roam mode. Oh, we're just kind of stuck wherever the camera was. Um, yeah, let's come up with some ideas for this. It's something I've, I've been wanting to do this for quite a while. See you, bud. Appreciate everything, and yeah, um, I'll keep plugging that. I may actually um, do a quick project with the Cinti assets on that, just to kind of showcase a few things. But I'm going to keep working on this this idea right here. Um, I will uh, come up with some ideas, and I will try to find a link to that game. And I'll link it in my um, my general channel for UE4. Alright guys, we're at the one hour mark, so I'm going to go ahead and call this video, and then um, if you guys want to see more, or if you want to chat more, hit me on Discord, I'll actually make myself visible there, I'm invisible most of the time, so I want to thank everybody for watching, and we will see you again on Wednesday, unless I come up with something fun I want to share. Alright, thanks, and we'll see you later.